Hey there, it's David H. Lawrence, the 17th. I promise you these will be the last two fallacies for now. Uh, I actually I have one more that I want to share with you, but I think it deserves its own video, so I'll do that sometime in the near future. Uh, these last two fallacies, we've had a, a bit of a journey here. This makes 11 that we've talked about in the last few videos. And I, I wonder, you know, when you leave a comment for me, have these been useful at all? Or have you find yourself, like... Uh, noticing these things, or are you just sort of aware of them now, or do they not really matter to you? I'd love to know, but let's let's find out about these last two. So the first one has to do with how much we are invested in stories, in processes, and so on, and it's called the narrative fallacy, and this is the idea that we really tie ourselves into stories that... Uh, apply to or com come from those people that we really admire, those heroes that we have in our lives. We want to be like them. We aspire to be like them. Even when those heroes turn out to not be so heroic. And, you know, one, there's one thing we found in the last 10 years or so since the, the Time's Up movement, the Me Too movement, the um the nature of media in the country revealing the the negative peccadilloes of people that we thought were heroic to us uh, is that if we cling to that story, we may be clinging to a story that a isn't real and b isn't representative of what we could possibly achieve. Um, it could be that their resources were different or their their opportunities were different. That's a big one, but if the end result is bad for them, we still kind of, you know, push back on that and go, yeah, but, right? It's like this whole idea of how do you separate the art from the person? You know, we've, we've seen many, many, many artists over the last few years be called out on their misogyny and their cruelty and their racism and their ageism, their sexism, um, but yet they've created art. And um, in some cases, you know, they've been accused of sexual predatory practices, but yet they have very popular art. And so the narrative fallacy is the idea that uh, it's okay, I'm just going to take the good part and I'm going to deal with the good part. And it kind of negates and, and ignores the idea that we are all very complex humans and some of what we experience is due to the negative facets of our personalities, our relationships, and so on. So the narrative fallacy is kind of a, um, you know, rose-colored glasses kind of thing. And then the last one, and this is a big one, it's called the endowment fallacy. And this is uh, the idea that we give more value, we give uh, higher um, worth to those things that we have created, that we own, that we... Uh, are selling, you know, um, it, it can it can sort of make it difficult for a product or a service to compete when they go, yeah, but that's the way we do it and it's better. I don't care what other people are doing without looking at what other people are doing and thinking to yourself, huh, well, maybe I could, uh, maybe I could do that with mine or maybe I could compete and do it better. Who knows? Um, we get attached to the work that we create, the products that we create, the services that we create, and we think about the actual price in terms of what we value that to be as opposed to what our marketplace values it as. And, and often, and we're going to talk about this in an upcoming video as well, we underprice what we do because we don't realize just how valuable it is to our our uh, our market to our customers, you know, what does it save them in terms of cost, in terms of effort, and so on? So it can work both ways, but usually the endowment fallacy works in the way that you're overpricing things because you give it too much value. You don't look at the value that a you know interested and uh, you know encouraged third party would look at it with, not a disinterested third party. But uh, you, you you look at it only from the perspective of, I've worked very hard on this. I've worked on this for 25 years. And by God, I'm going to get $1,000 out of this when the marketplace wants to price it at $20. So that's the endowment fallacy. So there you go. There, there are two uh, fallacies that will wrap up this. I've got 
lots more. And I love the comments that you guys have been leaving on this because you're even calling me out on uh, some of my basic tenets, like my, uh, my definition of success, do more of what works and less of what doesn't. Well, isn't there a fallacy there? You know, you're, you're relying on what has worked for you in the past. And I think part of that is very nuancy, very nuancy. Um, I don't ever want to rely on something that has worked just because it's worked in the past. I want to rely on things that are reproducible, that I know I can count on. And if they don't work in the future, I'll notice that when I follow, you know, do more of what works and, what, and less of what doesn't, and I'll do it less often. You know, if something no longer sparks joy, um, you know, I'll, I'll move on to something else. So, and I appreciate that very much. I think it was Ed Vio that made that comment. Uh, Ed Waldorf. Um, so yeah, there you go. Leave me a comment. Let me know. And um, I, I've got some really cool things coming up in the next few uh, videos. I am getting prepared to go in for shoulder surgery. I'm going to get arthroscopic surgery and finally going to take care of this shoulder. Um, so I'm going to try to get ahead so that I don't break the streak. I think I'll be able to do it. Um, so there you go. Leave me a comment. If you're on vo2gogo.com, that's the place to leave a comment because the conversation is moderated and sane and polite. Um, but if you want to watch this on YouTube and leave a comment there, that's fine too. Uh, but I would really appreciate it if you would go to Vio2Gogo -Go -Go only because there are other resources there uh, that can help you in your performance and other industry career. Uh, if you'd like to subscribe to my YouTube channel, please go ahead, click on my face there. If there's no face, look for a subscribe button somewhere on the page. And if you'd like to see the latest episode I've released, Click on that frame there and YouTube will play it for you because that's what they do. I'm David H. Lawrence, the 17th. Thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you tomorrow.